Welcome to this video number three on first order low pass filter. The first order low pass filter we see here is made up of a resistor and a capacitor. And we use the model of a two port network. So we have the input and the output. Before we can say that this is actually a low pass filter, it's a good idea to test very fast if our assumption about the low pass filter is true. The first thing we do is we assume the input is a DC, so zero hertz. How would the circuit then behave? Um, at DC level, the capacitor is an open circuit. So we will only see the resistor on the output. So there is no difference in signal between the input V in and V out. So we would be up here on the graph around one because V out divided by V in will be the same. So we would have um, one. Then the next step is to actually assume that V in is an infinite frequency. And then if it's an infinite frequency, we can see here on the equation for the capacitor, for its impedance, that an infinite here would make this value infinite small. So in principle, the capacitor is a short circuit. If we have a short circuit on the output, we will see ground through this pin. So we will actually have zero out, meaning V out is zero divided by V in. That's definitely zero. So at infinite frequency, we have zero. So based on these two points, we can make this approximation that it actually looks like a low pass filter. And then we can actually start our analysis of the circuit further because we have a good clue on that this is actually a low pass filter. So this is, is our first step on an analysis. The second is that um, we need to find the transfer function of this filter in order to do the further analysis. And the transfer function means we need to find the magnitude, an expression for the magnitude, and we need an expression for the phase. So similar for exercise 6.2, we need to have an idea of how the magnitude behaves and how the phase behaves of the circuit. We use um, the goal um, of it is actually to get the transfer function, the phaser output over the phaser input, so that we can predict what the output will be because we can take the phaser input times the transfer function. How do we do that? Well, we consider it a two-port network and we try to use the current, the phase of current, to write an equation for the current. So if we have V in, it looks, how would the current be in this circuit? It's simply V in over the sum of the impedances. So here we have V in divided by R plus the impedance for the capacitor, complex impedance. Next is to write an equation for V out. And uh, V out is of course the current times the resistance, Ohm's law is still coming. So we have it here, the complex current times the impedance for the capacitor. So V out becomes the equation for the current times the impedance of the capacitor. So we have now an um, equation for the output phaser. The next 
is to uh, write the transfer function v out over v in. We know that v out looks like this. We have v in up here. So we can take v in and put to the other side. And then we have to beautify the equation a bit so that it looks like this one. J 1 plus j something. So we are interested in to get 1 plus j something down here in the nominator. Um, so we of course have to reduce the equation a bit in order to beautify to get it here. But I leave that as a small exercise to you. Then we use the definition that the breakpoint frequency is 1 over 2p times rc. fb is also called the, the cutoff frequency, the break frequency, the minus 3 dB frequency, or the half power frequency. So a dear child has many names. Um, if we use this one, we can see that we actually have 2PRC in here. And we have JF up here. So by applying this um, definition, we can actually re rewrite this one to this equation. So this is is our transfer function uh, normalized to the FB, so the break frequency or the cutoff frequency uh, equation. So if I know the break frequency that I can calculate based on this, and I have here F, that's the running frequency, the frequency that I want to investigate the two port network for. So I could be interesting um, investigating the filter from 10 hertz to 100 hertz. Then I would write 10 hertz here, um, perhaps 30 hertz, uh, 60 hertz, and then 100 hertz. And then I would have an idea of how the transfer function would look like for the different frequencies. So based on that equation, we can, this equation, we can now uh, relate the transfer function into the magnitude of it and the phase of it. Uh, when we do measurement, it's just the output amplitude divided by the input amplitude and the output phase shift minus the input phase shift. But when we have to calculate it, we use, we have to take the magnitude of the transfer function. And we do that by our transfer function looks like this. So we take 1 squared and square root. That's of course, okay, uh, is 1. And then um, we also take the square root in the denominator. So that's 1 squared plus the imaginary part squared. And then we take the square root of it. And since 1 squared is still 1, and also here, we get this equation for the magnitude. For the phase, we know that it is the, um, the 1 divided by um, what we have down here. So 1 is a phase shift of 0 minus the tangent of the imeric imaginary part f over fb that would be the phase of it in some books you will see that this zero isn't even written it's just write minus tangents and that's due to that we have a one up here it has no phase shift so now we have the low pass filter we have made it into a uh, description of the two-port network with the magnitude and the phase shift. There is some distinguish things that we have to note. At the breakpoint frequency, 
there's a characteristic of the graph that at the breakpoint point frequency we have 0 0.707 as an output, meaning v in uh, times the transfer function for the magnitude here would give 0 0.707 out if v in is one volt. So this is a, a specific number. It's also if this was written in dB, that would actually be minus 3 dB. Another characteristic for the phase of a low pass filter is at the breakpoint frequency, we have minus 45 degrees. Um, so these are the very two characteristics of a low pass filter of first order that we have at a breakpoint frequency 0.707 times V in as the output and a phase shift of 45 degrees. Um, as I wrote here, you have to notice this is a linear scale. So if we had a logarithmic scale, it would look uh, different. Typically, we will simulate um, filters with a logarithmic scale because then we can have much more information on one window than only here three times. Normally the, the cutoff frequency and how it behaves up here, this is not easy to see if it's really flat or how it looks. So here is a spice of simulation of the low pass filter. And <clears throat> we look to this standard for a um, generic a low pass filter that we are looking for FB. We can find on them uh, here on the X, I'm sorry, the Y uh, axis, we can find this point when we have an input of one volt. So typically we set up the source to uh, AC, one volt and zero phase shift. <clears throat> we have our low pass filter and we have defined the input and the output. And in this case, for this information here, we can see that um, the cutoff frequency is 100.1 Hz. And we go in on the graph here by help of the cursors and see, okay, reading that the magnitude is 0.6 here millivolt, 706 millivolt. That's very close to this value. And we can also see that the phase shift is minus 45 degrees. So that fits with it. So this is a first order low pass filter what we have here and how we simulate it. Um, on Blackboard there is more a small video on how to simulate yourself the um, low pass filter. Yeah, thank you for now.